Hey everyone, so this is a video on putting a B48 into an E46 chassis. Um, we build our B46 race cars, which is a pretty integrated system, but I thought I'd make a relatively quick video on what it takes to put this four cylinder into an E46 chassis, also can apply to an E36. So I've got my list here of things to talk about and uh, show you a little bit of what it takes. So starting out here, this is a car that we're finishing up building, car nine. Um, this video does predominantly apply to the D engine of the B48 series. So 2020 and kind of newer up to about uh, early 2024. There's a bunch of differences between what we call the B version. So like 2017 to 2020 and then the new P version. Um, a lot of differences, I'll, I'll discuss some of those. but. Uh, Starting out with the mounting. So we actually cut, normally on an E46 here, there's the um, whole HVAC thing. Uh, we cut a little bit of the firewall. There's still decent amount of room. Um, it's not crazy, it's pretty close on the back here. I'll try and uh, show from the underside too, but we pretty much put this thing as far back as possible. We've got some engine mounts. Um, I'll actually show you this engine without all that stuff on it. So this is our P46 uh, parts area, sub-assemblies, but this is what the engine looks like outside of the car. Um, the closest part here is the cam solenoids on the back, but we make, uh, we make these motor mounts. We've actually got a new design coming out that mount it nicely into an E46. So I can also show on this car where the, um, so how it clears the subframe. So the oil pan, the, uh, the pump is at the back of the engine along with the timing chains. And so this is in a, uh, it's a manual trans, but um, the engine is quite close to the subframe. And there's not a lot of room. So we tried to give it a little bit of space um, to, clear the, to clear the pan in case like the motor mounts collapse or whatever. But uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty tight in there. It's about as far down as it can go. And um, in terms of how far back it goes, there's not a lot of room, especially if you want to like actually work on the thing. Um, so these, we also use, uh, we designed our mounts to run stock style engine mounts. Um, I've been asked a lot if these fits in an E30. And I think if you use the S54, like can, or M5X conversion mounts, um, then it could theoretically work. So, I have no idea if it actually does, but um, yeah, we've tried to utilize the stock E46, E36 mounts, so you can use solid mounts, anything. We use the PowerFlex ones. I like that they still have some give, but, but are encapsulated. Coming back around to this guy, so the front of the engine, there's actually a lot of room, but not really at the same time. So we run, um, I'll get to the cooling system in a minute, but uh, there's technically a lot of space because if you're kind of looking, trying to get the perspective here, the front of the engine to the shock towers, um, it is pretty far back, but there's so much stuff on the front of it, especially with what we had. Um, let's see here. So the uh, other stuff that we do add to this, speaking, going back to the oil pan slightly. So we, we have a dipstick kit that we add to this guy. Um, there's also the, let's see down here. So these are the lines for the oil cooler. Normally there's a, um, oil to water heat exchanger or water to oil heat exchanger. Uh, so we add a plate, we make a plate for this that uh, bolts to the filter housing and we just run the stock filter housing, but we bolt that on there to get oil cooling to the front. So this is our oil cooler mounted. So we still do use a stock E46 radiator. However, we've made our own uh, 3D printed mounts here. So yeah, speaking of which, I'm gonna talk about the cooling system now. So there's actually, this radiator looks super thick, but it's the uh, E46 M3, I should say, uh, engine radiator. And then behind that, or in front of that is a, uh, this is a Mishimoto um, front mounted intercooler, uh, you know, liquid intercooler. So we stack those with our mounts. You can mount it kind of however you want. Uh, we tried to move the whole stack back a little bit um so it is even tired of the front of the engine we also run 
This is an engine fan from an M4. Um, you basically need a lot of fan cooling to be able to pull the air through both radiator stacks. Um, this actually even makes a difference above 120 miles an hour, believe it or not. So that's a 850 watt fan out of an M4. Also in terms of cooling, so we, um, you know, we run, you have to make a lot of hoses for this to get it to fit. We do have a fitting kit, um, but intercooler expansion tank, engine expansion tank. Um, and then we also make our own charge pipe, which, uh, so this guy, these are 3d printed aluminum and then there's an extra cooler down there. So this is intercooled. That's intercooled. This first one at high boost levels drops, uh, temperatures by about 70 Celsius. So we found coming out of the turbo, the, at a little over at like 32 pounds of boost, the, um, air was about 140 Celsius. And then this, this first <coughs> charge pipe drops it to about 70 Celsius. And then this one in ideal conditions gets it to a little under 40 Celsius. So if you're doing long races, then that builds over time up to in the 50, 60 range. Um, a lot of hoses, as you can see, this is the turbo, uh, intercooler pump. We actually, the turbo we run, it's kind of a Garrett knockoff, a little bit hard to see, but, uh, we use the stock. Part of the reason we run it is we can run the stock, uh, water lines, which, uh, unfortunately are kind of hidden down there, but we just run the factory lines for the engine. Uh, we do make this one to, sorry, this one to meet up to the turbo. Um, the, uh, or apologize this one, which is the inlet for the turbo pump. So that just cools the turbo. It's mostly after run. And then down here is the, uh, intercooler, uh, pump, which you do again, we had to make lines for that. That's the stock mounting location, but because we run this additional intercooler and things, um, that guy gets all new hoses basically. Switched over to the other car here to show the cooling system. So again, these are our, uh, our mounts that we make to uh, mount the radiator stack. And we use this Mishimoto front mounted intercooler. Um, so a lot of these lightest parts we make, but you can just make little tabs and things to mount these. Um, or we've discussed doing uh, how it is on like an M4 and have side mounted intercooler radiators to not block the front engine one. But yeah, we have uh, kind of see the plumbing here for that guy and the engine fan mounting and our uh, extra intercooler charge pipe. So we also um, delete the Valvetronic here. This is a crazy little motor that uh, I don't know of any standalone system that can run that. Um, again, that's a whole nother video. So we do upgrade our charge, our uh, manifold pressure sensor. The um, stock charge pressure sensor actually reads quite high. So the stock one is sufficient and this is a additional uh, intake temp pre, um, you know, so when I was talking about the temps before we're reading it here and then this has an additional temp sensor in it. So quite a few things you have to run. Um, again, we run a MoTeC ECU. If someone, I'd be actually curious to know if anyone's gotten a standalone version of a stock ECU to work. One of the nice things about running standalone though, um, like a MoTeC ECU is, is less limp coat issues. Um, if you're running these as a race car, less sort of emission related issues. Um, and then a lot of extra features. So we are working on a package that uses an M122 ECU instead of an M142. Uh, we do have to delete a lot of stuff to do that. So it's kind of complicated. Um, but that's something we're working on to, we're going to put one of these in a E46 street car. That's something we're working on right now. Um, so we're going to, have that be the cheapest possible kit. We're just anything we can delete, we are deleting and trying to make it so that, you know, people can put these in, in street cars and don't need all the motorsport features. One thing I forgot to mention. So normally on these right down here is where the AC goes. Um, on the left side, that's usually an AC compressor. We just have a delete pulley, um, on one car that we provide an engine, electronics package for, they put their power steering pump there on knee 36. Uh, we add, um, hydroelectric power steering. So it's just a Volvo pump. Um, and then we make this nice little line kit that, uh, with some hard lines, so much stuff in here, it's hard to see, but, um, that's what we do for the power steering. And then we just run the normal 
E46 like CHP rack, or it's actually a Z3 rack, I should say. So we're actually gonna swing back over here, talk about transmission. So, well, first I can, these guys. Um, so we run a GS637. One note is the starter, unlike a normal like M52, S54, the starter is down at the bottom, uh, not at the top. So this is, this transmission's upright. Um, and then this GS36, it's the same trans that came very roughly in a E46 330. So it's got the 22 spline input shaft. Um, we run a race clutch from a company called TTV out of England, but um, this transmission is also from Europe. It's a GS637 DZ. It's pretty special. Uh, it does have an E90 uh, size, a 335 E90 output shaft. So can handle a lot more torque, but you need to get the nose of an E90 um, drive shaft for that. And uh, so this one's got the manual. And we also make a sequential, which uh, is in the other car, and I'll raise that up and show it. But um, interestingly, so we run, kind of see here, this is just stock E46 uh, six-speed mount, and it just happens to go where it needs to go. Um, this part up here, BMW is actually out of. We've been struggling to get those. So this one is a, uh, we just copied it and 3D print it out of aluminum. My camera's focusing correctly. Um, so yeah, that's a 3D printed aluminum piece that we now make because we had to. Um, exhaust. So we make this exhaust. It's a uh, full, basically CNC uh, laser cut exhaust. Um, but on the front side, which is probably what you're more concerned about, the um, so we just have it, we make this and it joins up here, but this is a uh, F30 charge pipe. Uh, so B48, like B, they, or not, sorry, not charge pipe, uh, down pipe. Um, and these guys, this is a VRSF one, works really nicely. Um, so the exhaust is pretty easy on these, um, quite a bit of room, but obviously this is a race car. For a street car, you probably want a little more muffling. And transitioning back, I raised this car up. So this is uh, a sequential version. We use a Hollinger uh, SG3 gearbox. So um, this is, we use the same mounting. We just make a little uh, interface plate here. Um, but this transmission, we have to, Hollinger makes us a uh, bell housing for it, like cast bell housing. The one thing is, the flywheel on these things is huge to reach the starter. So it's not that easy. I, I think some people have done it, but to adapt like a ZF five speed is not straightforward because the starter's in the wrong place. And the, um, like I said, to achieve, to get to the starter teeth, um, the flywheel has to be huge. So this thing is also, you know, it's hard to go a whole lot uh, lower to the ground with this engine, even if you did modify some other stuff because the bell housing is pretty big. So the starter is uh, not not too far below the subframe. There's some room, but not much. Um, yeah, and this one we actually use a, uh, like a CV yoke style from, uh, I think it's a Chevy. But uh, same exhaust on this one. Um, we find that the three inch is sufficient to uh, at least 450 wheel horsepower. I don't know if it restricts it above that, but it's not restrictive above that. So we also run flex fuel on these cars. We have our flex fuel sensor here, just a um, returnless fuel system. So the one, the one fuel line that goes up there. Also thought while I was under this car, I'd mention again, the clearance to the, the firewall. So this has a little more room with the sequential, um, but most people are not going to use this sequential. It's quite expensive. It's race car specific, um, but Trying to get the depth on the camera. Uh, it's a little easier to work on this one, but still pretty much not a lot of room to the firewall. Um, you know, I can't really fit my hand just barely up in here. So yeah, there's not where our, where our mounts place this engine um, is pretty much what you get. The steering is not too big of a problem with the way we made the mount too. It's got this nice curve in it. Um, and yeah, there's plenty, you know, that setup works well. 
Um, and you can put a bigger turbo on there if you want. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And hopefully that gives people some information on how to put a B48 into an E46. So we do, um, we do make some good integration parts. We're working on more, um, especially for a street version and simplifying everything. Again, the race car version is a little bit complicated, um, kind of of necessity. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to want to use these engines in a lot of different cars. Um, and it's exciting to see what people are doing with it. So love to know in the comments um, things that I didn't cover enough in detail. I'll make another video for everything that uh, people are like, okay, you just glossed over that. Um, so yeah, appreciate a comment and let me know what else I need to cover. Thanks.